Hello, hello, my lovely stitchy friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Catkin and Lily. I'm Kat and today I have so much stitchy goodness to share with you. It's probably a good job I edit the heck out of my videos because otherwise I think this would probably, well, it'd be movie length and you'd need some popcorn. So let's hope it doesn't get that bad. Anyway, today is the, well, it's the 3rd of October, but this video will be up on the 4th of October. And yeah, it's just about autumn here in the UK. Um, and you can see I'm feeling a little bit autumnal here with the stuff behind me as well. But the weather's actually surprisingly mild. It's, it went a bit colder and now it's gone a bit warmer again. So it seems very confused. But anyway, I am not complaining. It's a lovely sunny day today. And I have still been getting so much stitchy time over the last few weeks. In fact, that's why I'm here again today because we only chatted just a week ago, um, but that floss tube was an FFO tour, um, well, FFO parade with a tour of my house as well. So you got to see some of my finished pieces and it seems like you all really enjoyed that. So thank you very much for your lovely comments. But that means that the last whip update I did was three weeks ago. And I have done loads in that time and I've got loads of stuff to show you. I have got stash, I have got plans, which is crazy because I don't really do plans, but all the whips means I potentially need plans. So I have plans. But first, oh my goodness, I have 2000 subscribers. There's 2000 of you. Okay, teeny, teeny bit of a lie. I'm a couple off, but I'm willing to bet by the time I post this, I'm going to have 2000 and can you tell I'm a bit excited? I'm, yeah, excited, blown away. Thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed. If you haven't, come on in. It's absolutely lovely to have you all here. Just, I, it's crazy, it's crazy. I cannot believe it. Uh, thank you so, so much. And okay, I need to calm myself a little bit because we have got a lot of stitching to look at. I have got one new finish, three new starts, one of which is also nearly finished. I have one ready to start and one stitch along that's going to be starting soon. And I have four other kind of regular whips that I've been working on to show you progress. So yeah, there's quite a lot. Get comfy, get a hot drink, and we will get into all of that good stuff. In fact, let's start with the finish. So my finish is this. This is my Halloween pattern that I was stitching and I have finished it, all done. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, if I move it, the thread that I used here for the spider's web, that's kind of sparkly. It probably won't focus if I come in, but yeah. I used that's DMC Etoile thread. So that's not too nasty to stitch with. DMC Etoile is actually quite nice to stitch with because it's basically just cotton with a little sparkle running through. So perfect for the spider's webs. And I've got the other one here. So I now have, I have the two, which is amazing. I've got my two hoops, Halloween hoops, all hooped up, all finished, ready to put on display. So yeah. That's very exciting. And of course, those patterns are available to buy in my Etsy shop. So that'll be linked below for you if you want to stitch either of those. And while we're on Halloween stitching, that leads me right into the first of my whips that I've been working on. So I am also experimenting with some little information panels that I'm gonna be putting up to the side of me for all the project details. So it basically just saves me having to remember and tell you each time what all the fabric is and the threads and the pattern name and all that kind of stuff. So in case I forget something, because yeah, that, that happens. I'm gonna put all the information on the side for you. Now, the first whip I have to show you is, um, actually it's a Halloween pattern, like I say, and it's one that I started last year, completely forgot I had um, it. And so this is a whip that I didn't even have in my whip account because I'd forgotten about it. And it's the Little Ghost by Dewey Jones. And I've got here for you. So this is this one I did last year. I'd pretty much done, um, well, this is as far as I'd got to, and it's most of it bar the back stitch. And then I have this little guy who was mostly done, but not quite. 
So I finished up, I think, on a bit of the tree on this side and um, I had the gravestone in this bit on this side to do. So yeah, so that's those two. Now obviously you can see there are four of them. These were the two that I liked the best. So I was stitching those ones. I there is a third one I like. I funny enough, I the one I don't love so much is the um the little Dracula ghost. Um I like the other one with the big pumpkin. So I might stitch that, but I've decided it's too ambitious to try and do that this year. So I just want to get the two um that I've got here, get those ones finished so that I can at least get those turned up into something. I don't know, finished some way. I haven't decided how yet. I also haven't decided, you can see I've actually I've just stitched the circles. I'm actually not sure if I'm going to stitch the the corners that go on there. I haven't quite decided yet. I thought I'd make life easier and not do them, but actually they're quite pretty, so to be decided whether I add those or not. Now, if you like those ones, I will pop a link to uh, Doreen Jones's Etsy shop in the description below if you fancy stitching those ones. So project number two, and this is, yay, it, it's the Christmas bag. You're just going to get to see that every time because I love it. And of course the Christmas project, which I now have to work out if I've got ready for you. So this is my Christmas friends. This is the one that I am stitching while I'm watching the football matches. Um, so that is the Liverpool football matches. And of course there's a lot more now than just the Premier League. So there's quite a few football matches at the moment usually two a week, so I've been getting quite a bit done. So I've now done, uh, I had his hat to finish, well that's all finished. Uh, I've made a good start on the blue at the top, so I've just got a bit more to do up here. And you can see I've actually made a start on some backstitch. Because I thought I'd throw that in, a little bit of backstitch in the mix, just to mix it up a bit and for a little bit more interest between stitching the blue. So yeah, actually I'm really, really looking forward to stitching this one. I'm almost wanting to stitch it more than just the football matches, but I am, I'm sticking to the football matches. So yeah, I think that should be finished fairly soon, I hope. So next up, we have my Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Castle Homecoming stitch along. So um, this is the ones I have, I've put the picture up of, um, where it's up to, that is up to and including part five that's been released. And I had, last time I had stitched all of part four, I think, or just about, and ready to start part five. And so, yep, I have started part five now. I haven't finished part five. So this is where we're at with Castle Homecoming. And part five, as you might see, is there's a, a turret on this side here and a little princess. So yes, I've got more, I've got a bit of the sort of brickwork that I've started off there. Um, so yeah, I've got more to do on that. I've got, I've got a few threads hanging out on here, which is because I actually don't like the threads hanging like that for ages, but um, I also don't like stitching, I don't like leaving gaps. So I will often have a few threads um, on there sort of parked so that I can do a bit, leave a bit hanging, do the next bit along and then yeah, basically work in sequence. So it does mean you end up with a couple of threads um, hanging out there, but yeah, that's, for me, that's better than having gaps and going back to fill them in. And we still have another, about a week or so until the next part of this comes out. So yeah, I'm actually keeping up with it quite well, although I've slowed down. I think there's still quite a bit to do on part five. So I think just the sheer volume of whips at the moment, um, it is catching up with me a little bit, hence why I need plans to make sure that I don't forget to do things like this, because I'm really pleased I'm actually staying up to date with the stitch long um, and not just falling way behind. So yeah, that's just really nice. The next one is my Menagerie Illusion. So that's the chameleon that I've been working on, which is actually, I almost wasn't going to show it to you because I didn't think I'd done very much. I certainly haven't touched it in the last week, but it has been three weeks since I made the last video. So I had a look and actually I had done a fair bit. So decided it probably was worth um, worth showing you. It's here, well, here's where it's at. So I have done, I've done a decent bit. I've actually done quite a little bit of the frill and the bit down here. And yeah, he's looking, he's looking amazing. <laughs> Just look at that face. I can't decide what his expression is. He looks, I don't know, a bit smug maybe. Anyway, I absolutely love him. And I think the reason it's taking so long is, I'm not even sure I'm halfway through yet, because 
obviously the piece isn't full coverage because there's all this bit up here that's not stitched but everywhere that it is stitched there's then a bit down here and all yeah what is stitched is fully stitched there's no gaps so it's yeah it's not the fastest and it's lots of I've talked about this before it's lots of little bits of colour so it's a bit stop start so yeah um and I think he's just he's lost out a little bit the chameleon to well the new starts as you'll see so yeah I do need to put some more stitches in on him but I have done actually a decent bit more than I thought like I say since the last three weeks so anyway that's him now by contrast my house in the woods pattern which I hadn't stitched for ages and ages and ages and then the last few weeks I feel like I've stitched loads um, I think it's just been a really nice project to pick up in the evening because you can just do a little motif here a little motif there and it's suddenly just built up really quickly in fact it's such a good project for that if you only have small blocks of time to stitch in then something like this is perfect so you can see where I was before and let's take a look and I'll try and uh, there you go is that yeah that's all of it just about I've done loads I've got all the way to this house in the middle um, working on the roof up here and yeah absolutely loads I've got that's that bottom corner there so I've managed to get all the way to that bottom corner and yeah absolutely loving this it's just it's just such a nice relaxing stitch and it's good in the evening if my eyes are a bit tired it is 16 count but it's so easy to work the motifs I'm just yeah absolutely loving that now I did have one worry with it which is that I suddenly thought I was getting through the thread quite fast because it's a really limited colour palette but I'd got a whole skein of each of the colours because I figured there'd be quite a lot now it's possible the pattern told me how much I was going to need and I didn't read it but I figured a whole skein of each colour would be absolutely fine and I was working through this and I started to really worry that I might run out and have to get another skein and if it didn't colour match I think on a project like this it might be quite obvious I think it's probably okay because I think what do you think do you think I'm am I halfway I'm sort of trying to figure it out if I sort of take a diagonal line I, I feel like I've maybe I don't know I feel like I might just be about halfway but I've just started being super frugal with the thread um, I am not always one to be super frugal because I can't be faffed eking out those last little tiny bits of thread honestly I'm really not that bothered but I am on this one now that's it down to the last tiny millimeter of thread if I can on this just to make sure that I don't run out so yeah fingers crossed and <laughs> I hope that's going to be okay so now we are on to new starts and like I say I have three of them one was a bit of a last minute project because I learned that some of our neighbors were getting married so we came before last, um, we noticed the car outside their house and yeah, found out that they were getting married, um, which we obviously didn't know about, none of the neighbours did. So I thought I would make them something special and of course I couldn't just go and find a design, I needed to make my own and that's why if you follow me on Instagram you may have seen these beautiful threads um, that I picked out. Not your traditional wedding colours, I think I wanted something that was very slightly autumnal hence the sort of green but it's actually ended up more teal and the orange and um but a bit of pink in there as well because that is a bit more romantic I don't know what I was thinking to be honest but this is where we are at with it I've just got a little cake little wedding cake with a heart on the top and you can see it's basically done just need to put some back stitch I started that and yeah I just need to finish up the back stitch on there and then I'll make that up into a card now I might have to gift that card before we chat again uh, in which case I'll just take a picture of it so that I can show you I won't have the actual finished object um, or maybe I'll do a little video to pop in for you as well so yeah I want to get that finished up and gifted to them so it they don't get it like three months after the wedding I think if I can do it by this weekend that will be two weeks that's probably okay for something handmade I think they'll forgive me Oh, and then of course I will release that pattern um, having designed it I think I will put it out there with some different color options some different patterns uh, some birthday candle option on the top instead of the hearts if you want to use it for birthday cake you could so yes probably my brain always goes oh this option that option and I get a little bit carried away but anyway I will try and get that one uh, released as well 
now the first of the two big new starts. And if you've seen my previous floss tubes, you'll know what I'm talking about. The first one is the Chromatic Dragon. So this is my new full coverage piece, huge full coverage piece. Uh, having finished my previous one, um, this is the one that I picked to start and I've started it. So let me check, I started on the 20th of September. And I, I really wanted to start this one in the bottom right hand corner. Because if I start bottom right hand corner, then I'm always working up and away from my stitches. So when I'm holding it, it means that I'm not holding my stitching. So bottom right hand corner start would be preferred. But if you look at the picture, I that would have left me all the dark at the top to do right near the end. And I didn't want to. So I've gone with a top left start. So here we are, here is where I'm at. So that is top left corner. And I've got just this, obviously is one of the horns. And then a lot of, a lot of black. Black and dark blue. Yeah, I don't think I quite realized. I, I knew how many stitches there were of black and very dark blue. I just don't think I realised what that would feel like to stitch. So I'm kind of having to stitch it. So I'm stitching, this is why it's in bits because I sort of have to try and stitch some of this up here, the very dark, and there's a big swathe down here. So I'm kind of trying to do some of that. And then I treat myself to do a little bit of the colour. So yeah, just trying to mix in that dark. And this isn't even the bit with the most dark stitches in. So it's a lot, it's a lot, but I am still really enjoying it. And on the plus side, when you stitch those rows, it's really quick to do. So that's, you know, that's definitely a bonus. It's not confetti um, so much. So yeah, it, it's quite nice just being able to mix it up a bit. And this is, I know I talk about not liking to leave gaps and you're probably thinking, well, hang on a minute. What is, what is this nonsense? Well, that's because you cannot possibly stitch one of these full coverage ones and literally, well, no, you can. Sorry, that's a lie, you can, because you can park and you can literally stitch it all as it comes. But I also really hate the idea of the parking and having all those threads all hanging out on the design. Um, that also uh, is upsetting to me. So the lesser of two evils on this one for me is to work a bit more cross country um, and leave those gaps and go back and, and fill it in rather than having tons of threads uh, hanging out on the front of my piece. So yeah, that's how I choose to, um, to work that one. And let me just check my stats. That is 3,210 stitches, which is 1.53%. So I am again stitching it using Pattern Keeper. I did say I downloaded another app called Markup RXP to try, and I just didn't like the look of it quite as much and the feel of the marking off. I didn't love it as much as Pattern Keeper, so I've gone back to Pattern Keeper. Now, Markup RXP might be quite useful for some other situations, but I haven't really got into that yet and I haven't got time to play around with it at the moment, to be honest. So I'm using Pattern Keeper again for the dragon and yeah, obviously that's, um, that's super useful. Now I am stitching it slower than my previous full coverage. I, on the previous one, I tried to do some every day and I'm not doing that with this one. I've actually only stitched 10 days so far, which is averaging me, let's see, well, 229 stitches per day over all of those days. So that's not just the days I stitched, 229 per number of days since I started, which is slower than my previous one, but that's fine. I've just got so much other, I've got so many other whips and I do want to give love to everything or most things. So I am not being as fanatical about stitching this every day. Definitely not. Um, you'll see when I talk about my plans um, that it's, yeah, it's not an everyday stitch like my previous huge project was. But I am taking photos every 1% again. So obviously I've only taken one so far, but yes, I'm gonna take photos at 1%, every 1% so that I can put those all together and do a time-lapse again, because a lot of you really love the time-lapse on the previous project. So. I'm going to do it again for this one. So the third and final new start, which was super exciting as well, was my mermaid. So that's Rossa by Bella Filippina. And um, I was, if you remember, I was waiting on my hand dyed fabric to arrive, which I got and I've made a start. 
Now, this is one I tried to, so it comes with a paper pattern. The paper pattern's really nice, it's got some different colours on it, so it's really easy to read. And what I would normally do with that is to put the pages all together and sellotape them so that it's all one big piece. Um, now I tried to do that, take a photo of it and put it into Markup RxP, because it can do pictures of things, but it was so huge and so detailed, it, it didn't really work very well. And again, maybe I could have got it to work, but I really didn't have the time to do it. So actually I'm just working from the paper pattern like I normally would, it's totally fine. And I'm waffling because you really want to see this, don't you? Right, that's where we're at. So I have started bottom middle for this one, so I can work my way up. And um, so I've got the tail, a little bit of sand, and obviously all these gaps, you can see on here all the little gaps and all over here that's where there'll be beads so yeah beads it'll be a while before i get to doing that i'm not going to be doing the beads um until right at the very end so yeah definitely not going to worry about those ones just yet but it's exciting to see the gaps where those will go so i also bought a couple of new things to use for my mermaid project but I'm teasing here because I'm going to show you that in a little bit when we talk about stash, so you're just going to have to hang on for that. Because I also have, I mentioned I have a ready to start that I was going to show you, and that is the Cotton and Twine September subscription box from the Historical Sampler Company. Now, I have had some of their subscription boxes in the past. They are absolutely beautiful. They're gorgeous. The boxes come with everything for the project, everything to finish it, a usually a nice sweet treat, a tea bag, a, a little ornament or other type thing in there as well. A really, really nice. Again, really good value for money, I think. But one every month was a bit much. And although I always like the projects, um, I guess I don't always love the projects. There's never been anything I think I haven't, haven't liked quite a lot. But do I love them all? Probably not. And it's still, although it's good value, that's still something you're paying out every month and I have to fit it into my stitching schedule. So I'd had a few boxes and then cancelled it. I saw the Halloween box for September and this is a little bit mean because this one's now finished. I literally slid in at the last minute to grab this box. But I wouldn't be disappointed if you didn't get this one because I've seen the next one coming out and it is also gorgeous, it's Christmas. So I'm definitely leaving the subscription running for that one and I am excited by that. But first, Halloween one. And obviously I've put the details up there for you and then here it is. The, that's the fabric and that's the threads for it. So again, not, not a huge number of threads, but the fabric's been specially dyed for them, which is absolutely gorgeous. And then they give you just, there's like a bit of fabric um, and a board. So you basically can make a, um, a backing for your project. So yeah, I, I'm so excited to start this one. This one, I'm actually gonna start it today. I've gotta to be honest, pretty much when I finish this video, I'm gonna treat myself to starting this one. So next time you see it, there'll be some progress on that, I reckon. And the next, sort of ready to start as soon as I get it, is another stitch along and it's also from the Historical Sampler Company. Now, I ordered this one before that Halloween um, September box. I ordered this one a few months ago. So when it arrived, it was very exciting because I'd slightly forgotten about it. And it's the Jingle Bells um, advent box and stitch along as well. Now you can have the advent box or the stitch along or both. I had, I had both and I'm gonna show you the advent box now. I know a few of you enjoyed the unboxing videos, so I'm gonna give you a little peek into the advent box. I had a really big box. Look, you can see how big this box is. This arrived a few days ago, and look, look what it is. I'm so excited. This is the advent box from the Historical Sampler Company, and I've seen it for a few years, and I really, really wanted to get my hands on one. So this is the year I finally taken the plunge and I'm gonna give you a little peek inside, but obviously there's not much to see, but let's take a look. So here we are inside the box and there's a, a little leaflet giving you all the details. 
but it's basically 24 lovely little packages of stitchy goodness. So let's have a little look. So there we are. Obviously I can't get into these, but I have beautiful little packages. Look at this, all sorts of exciting little treats, all packaged up with a day on. So from December, that seems like a really long time to wait. I bet it'll come around really quick, won't it? We've got all of this and the cutest little bag. Look at this adorable little pouch. And this has got, I haven't looked at this yet. So actually let's take a peek. This is because three of the packages in here contain little mini kits, which is amazing. I mean, the box is not cheap, but I feel like it's such good value. And there we go. We've got in here all the threads. Let's have a little look for the mini kits. And oh, they look so beautiful. Oh, and there's my needle as well. And I've got, there we go, all the colours for the three mini projects that are in this box. And they look so gorgeous. I can't wait to get in on this, but obviously I'm going to have to. Doesn't that just look amazing? <gasps> oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to get into that. Um, but the stitch along is starting sooner, so I'll be able to start on that. And I actually have another little video to show you of me just opening the envelope that has those bits and pieces in it. Obviously don't have the pattern yet, but um, yeah, here's the, I was gonna say unboxing. It's, it's an unenveloping. I don't know if that's a thing. It is now. So this is the Jingle Bell Stitch Along kit pack from the Historical Sampler Company. So this is the stitch along that starts um, in October. And I've not had a look at this yet, so I thought we would open it together. Let's have a little look what we've got inside here. Obviously not loads because it's a stitch along, so the pattern and everything will be coming out starts in the middle of October, which is very exciting, but let's have a little look at, oh my goodness, the gorgeous fabric. So I've got a lovely big piece there. That That is such a Christmassy green, isn't it? Oh, look at that. And then look at those colours. I've got a needle tucked in there as well. And let's let's unravel these so we can see them. Look at this. And I love that the Historical Sample Company, they always use DMC threads, so you know they're going to be really good quality. And look at that on there. That's that's a lot of white. But that's okay because it looks so beautiful against the green. And then you've even you've got some beautiful colours in here. Look at that pink and purple. And you've even you've got greens in here, but look how lovely they show up even on the green fabric. So yeah, I can't wait for the chart to arrive and to get stitching. Okay, we have got to stash. And I have got to be honest, it was a bit of a spending spree in September. Um, sometimes I go months and don't buy anything and then I just buy all the things all at once. And it was a bit like that in September. And the first thing I have is this project bag. So that's the project bag. And then, so it's a vinyl front one got this beautiful pink fabric on the inside and look at this can you see this oh got a little charm on it for the um zipper pull oh it is i'll show you that fabric again it it is quite frankly the most beautiful project bag i have ever seen and i can't even tell you i can't show you how beautifully made it is. It is absolutely stunning. The workmanship on this is crazy. I kind of don't want to tell you where it's from because I want to keep them all to myself because I, I don't think there's all that many uh, all the time from there and I sort of just want to buy all of them, but I will. It's from Not Enough Whip Bags. I will put a link in the description for you. Please don't go and buy everything, uh, except do go and support her because, oh, they the bag, th this is so, so well made. It's so beautiful. Um, it's absolutely, yeah, I, I love it to bits. Can you tell? Uh, so that's got my mermaid project in it. Obviously not at the moment it hasn't because I've taken it out to show you. Oh my goodness, I nearly forgot to show you. 
the, well I won't say the best bit because it's all the best bit, but look, it also came with this. You've got a little pouch. It's rattling because um, it's got my beads in it. I put the bead pack um, and the metallic thread for the mermaid in here. And yeah, it's got the pink fabric on the inside, little pouch that came with it as well, which is amazing. And, and a couple of little gifts in there as well and a little sweet. So yeah, absolutely highly recommend um, as long as you leave some for me as well. Now, the other thing I got was, I got some needle minders. I've got, I have this one, which is from Kate Blanford. Although I bought it from, so these, these have been specially made for the Geeky Stitching Company. Um, it's a little pink acrylic heart and it's super cute and it was pink. So I thought that could go for the mermaid as well because you really can't have too many needle minders. Um, it's really useful to have. I like one in every whip and I've now got so many whips I don't have enough needle minders so I need to buy some more which is a nice problem to have I guess isn't it now I actually have a slight problem because I also bought two needle minders from Kate Blanford directly from her Etsy shop um and I can't find one of them right now I don't know where I've put it I was trying to find it for the video it has to be in a project somewhere I was probably just rushing couldn't find it so I'll just show you this one if I can and I don't know if you can see it's a little pumpkin and he is just adorable you can see I'm moving around so you can see he is shiny proper shiny this one really shiny the other one is uh, completely the other end is a very matte black bat um so yeah gorgeous and i will link kate blandford's etsy shop in the description as well so yeah that's perfect for my halloween stitching You'll, i'll probably i'll put it in a photo somewhere on instagram probably the uh, the bat one as well but yeah loving those needle minders they're really really cute what i really like about these is you probably can't see but the magnets on the back they're quite small and they're really thin so they're and really lightweight so if you want a nice lightweight needle minder then um, these are absolutely fantastic so what else have I been buying hoops 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 and more hoops because you can never really have too many um, and I've been framing some of my pieces recently so decided that I I just needed a few more really. Um, I don't use them to <laughs> actually hold my work when I'm cross stitching, but I love them for framing. And I don't, you'll see if on this one, these are the Nerge hoops, um, which I just think they're really lovely quality. They're just really, really nice hoops. So yeah, Nerge hoops are the ones that I particularly uh, like to get hold of. So I'm well stocked up on those for a little bit now. And then also for some more finishing, I managed to grab I was in Hobbycraft and I grabbed a couple of these frames. Those are always super useful. I got that size and I got some little ones as well. I've already got some. There's more than those two. I just, just brought two to show you. And I saw these. Oh my goodness, how cute is that? Won't that look amazing with some stitching on it? So I went a bit mad. I got three of those. And then they had also a little sort of house or beach hut shaped one. So I got a couple of those and then heart shaped ones as well. So I got a couple of those. So yeah, I thought those would be really fun for just putting small finishes on and I could add like some paper flowers and stuff on there as well. So I think that would look really pretty. So yeah, just need to find something to put on those now. And my final purchase was I got myself some threads. These are these are paint box crafts threads because I wanted to try these. These are these are from um, Love Crafts. They're their own branded threads. They are way cheaper than DMC, and I just wanted to give them a go. So I've got a few. Oh, hang on. Yeah, no, I've got. Okay, I have a a couple more there as well. Um, no, wait, hang on. Hold on. I have, I've got a few more here. Yeah. I might have gone a little bit crazy. I have a problem. <laughs> well, 
I can't really do things by halves. If I decide I want to try something and I couldn't just get a few, I bought the set of 200. There are worse problems to have. Um, I've certainly got enough to try them out now uh, because I just really wanted to give them a go and see what they're like because I say they're so much cheaper than DMCs and there is a colour conversion chart. Obviously I have no idea how good that will be. I haven't got around to testing them yet um, but I have plenty of them to try out so let me know if you've tried them. I would love to know what you think um, although maybe not if you hate them. I'm not sure I want to know that. Um, but hey, everyone's different actually. Everyone likes different threads better than others. So you might not like them and I might. We'll, we'll see. Um, I definitely need to at least use some of them. Um, they were, I will say as well, that they were on 25% off. That was the other reason I kind of dived in at this point and got them because, as I say, they're cheaper anyway and at 25% off, yeah. It was, it was a bargain really, so yeah. And that's the last of my stash, woohoo! So plans, and as I said, I don't really do plans for stitching, but then I've not really had enough whips in the past to really need to make any kind of plan or rotation. And it's still a very loose plan or rotation because knowing me, it will get flexed all over the place. <laughs> and yeah, um, I'm not good at doing what I'm told to do, even if it's me that's telling me what to do. So we'll see how it goes. But the basic idea is just that I have projects um, at specific time slots in the day. So I'll have morning projects, afternoon projects. I have projects that are specifically for stitching on the two days when I work and want to stitch something when I come in from work. There'll be a specific project for that time of day and then evening projects. And then I'll also have a split between the things that I work on during the week and things um, at the weekend. Um, depending on as well if I'm at home for the weekend or away for the weekend. So I'm kind of blocking everything out, but there'll be a few options maybe in each slot. So I can pick and choose still a bit. Like I say, it's very loose. Um, I I will, I tell you what, I will put a picture up to show you sort of what I'm thinking about. And I really better not start anything else because there's no space for anything else in my schedule. It's pretty jam packed right now except for Christmas stitching. I have to fit that in somewhere as well. Uh, I don't even know what I want to stitch for Christmas apart from the stitch along. Yeah, okay. I need to think more about this. And last thing, any other business. So just general life stuff. Well, two things real super quick. Uh, one, my heaven and earth designs has gone to the framers, yay. Uh, yes, it was a mission to get it washed. Um, I might talk about that in another video, but it's done, it's gone to the framers. I am so excited to get it back and to see what it looks like with the frame and all that. Can't believe it. It didn't even cost a stupid amount. I thought it was really reasonable given the size of it actually. So yeah. Not not too bad, I didn't have a heart attack when I heard how much it was going to cost, so yay. And the other news is that we have ordered, I know this seems a bit random, we've ordered a new sofa bed, which is for what we call the library, uh, just because it has the bookshelves in it. And that means that I might transfer my filming. This could be the last time you see this backdrop. Possibly not, depends when I film next. But we might have a new sofa bed and therefore I'm going to try and turn that into somewhere to film. So yeah, maybe change a backdrop at some point. Okay, we're done, we're done. I promise I, we are done. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. It is crazy. It is crazy here right now. I, I don't know what I'm doing to myself. I normally run on about three or four whips. I have whips everywhere. I have stitch longs, um, I have smalls, I have huge projects, I have everything going on and I'm absolutely loving it. I can sort of see why people end up with 70 whips. Um, I don't think I'm going that crazy, but I am really enjoying having lots of different things to work on. It's keeping me really uh, interested and motivated. So yeah, I can actually recommend having more whips. Okay, so I am going to leave you lovely folks to the rest of your day and your week. 
I hope you have some stitchy time very soon. Um, I would be delighted if you've enjoyed this. Please subscribe. Um, come and join my, my 2,000 subscribers. Ah! No, okay, I'm not going to get too excited about it again, but thank you. Uh, until next time, happy stitching.